I'm Ron Erickson, and this is Project Synchro! Okay, so went to Home Depot the other day, and uh, I'm not a big proponent of any WD-40 products, mostly because it's not it's not really a lubricant. It's a water displacement product, and everybody swears up and down that WD-40 is some kind of magical liquid that whatever you know. It's a stereotypical thing like duct tape. Um, I don't really use a whole lot of WD-40 other than maybe a degreaser if it happens to be sitting around. It's warmer in there than it is out here. Oh, really? Um, but I did see a product that was similar to a product uh, my buddy Jim Hoff uses, but I forgot to ask him where he got his. So, um, not a super impulse buy, but kind of a half impulse buy because it was on sale, uh, apparently, is a, a product that WD-40 calls a rust remover soak. So, if you guys remember uh, me going through the tedium of sandblasting and, and zinc coating hardware, whenever I was pulling the synchro chassis or the synchro drivetrain and everything apart. Um, I'd like to do the same thing with the hardware on the engine. Like you can see kind of gross looking bowl. I think this is actually for the uh, alternator or something like that. Um, I have a lot of hardware that's, well, let's see. Here's a better example. This, this piece of hardware isn't 100% ruined. The head is a little crummy. It's not great. There's a little little surface rust on some of this stuff. There's some oil and just gunk on here. So um, I want to see if I can use this rust soak uh, product as, as a little treatment and just uh, see if I can soak some of this hardware in it, see how much it cleans up, and if possibly once I clean it up and wash it off, if I could zinc coat over that, or if I do have to go through the process like before where I sandblast everything and just rip all the coatings off of it and then recoat it. Um, I don't know how this is going to work out. I figured we'd do this at the uh, start of the evening, get things soaking. It's supposed to take anywhere between uh, 30 minutes and 24 hours to remove and or treat this rust. So um, I'm just going to uh, slap a little bit in a little tub I have. And uh, as I pull some hardware off of the engine here, we'll just throw it in and see how it does. Hopefully I don't have to shake it or anything comes out clear, which is very unconvincing. You pour like a man. Okay. Totally doesn't smell like anything either. I'm not convinced I was actually sold a product. So, grab a rag here. Actually, let's take this out. And it does say to remove just whatever kind of surface crud you can, obviously, you know got a bite through there. It's not going to do quite as well. Uh, throw a little bit more in there and cover all of that. So I'll toss all this stuff. Um, we'll come back a little later and see how it's doing. Until then, more, uh, more engine work. Did they sell you water? I'm sort of wondering if they did. They don't huh? have, that doesn't have any smell. This product is ready to use. I think I just bought snake oil. This rust remover soap can be reused. The more you de-rust, the darker the solution becomes. Solution is spent when it turns black and no longer performs. Do not pour the... okay. Yeah, it's clear. Totally clear. Here's a little before and after. We'll see if this is BS. I have some rust converting spray, I think made by Jasco, and some was made by KBS, but that was more advertised as like a spray on and, and uh, rinse off kind of a thing, not really a soak. Uh, Jim Hoff used a lot of this stuff on his buggy, but his, what he did 
and this was kind of a dark solution, he may have used it quite a bit, is he, um, he had a little space heater, and he set a bolt, this is like, Jim does this stuff where he knows more about it than, than the engineer that designed it, so he knows what he can get away with, but every time you see it, for the first five minutes you see a Jim Hoff solution, it looks like the sketchiest thing you've ever seen, so, um, I go in here, and he's got like this bucket suspended on a wire, and there's like a heater under it, and it's, you know, it's just a real sketchy thing, he's like, oh, you gotta keep the fluid hot, so it, so it gets rid of all the rust, and it, and it works at a, at a higher temperature, well, it's like 75 maybe in the garage right now, so um, hopefully that's all the temperature I need. I don't really want to put a heater under this. That's a little, a little too much for me. Okay, so it's been three or four hours or so here, and um, it looks like this thing's been uh, bubbling up over in the corner, and uh, we're going to see how some of these bolts came out. Now, again, I'm never really expecting to pull a bolt out of some of this stuff and have it look perfect, but um, you can already tell a lot of the, the flash rust and the stuff that was on the surface on some of these bolts that weren't, weren't really too bad, just sort of the heads were gummed up or something. Um, they actually look pretty good. I mean, they, they've seen a lot of bubbling and have seen a lot of rust converting and stuff happening, and uh, it's got that sort of black coating to it that you would expect, but... Um, yeah, it actually looks like it's doing a pretty decent job. So even though this stuff's clear and it doesn't really smell caustic and it's not like, you know, uh, uh, curling my eyebrows or anything weird like that, um, it seems to be doing a halfway decent job. I'm sure there's some, like, industrial version of this, like that uh, aircraft paint remover that we're all used to using that's ridiculous. Um, maybe I'll find that at some point, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll give this a solid for now seven out of ten for being something you can run to the store and pick up and use. So um, I'm gonna leave the stuff in even longer but my problem now is I'm, I'm like overflowing out of this little apricot uh, jar or whatever I put this in. So I'm gonna take the rest of this junk and actually I'm gonna start by trying not to completely ruin myself and pour um, this little container into this larger bucket and then I can fit more hardware in there and that's not gonna be messy and go all over the place. So we'll see if I don't have to screw this up. I already kind of am. Okay, that wasn't terrible. You can already see a lot of gunk in there. So kind of swirl this stuff around and then pour some more of this stuff in here. That should probably be good for now. I still have about half of this left, I guess. Yeah, this is one gallon, so. Yeah, this stuff actually bubbles up quite a bit when it first starts working, so hopefully that means something's going on. We'll leave that sit overnight, so uh, next time, guys, uh, we'll come back and uh, see how some of that hardware ended up. So um, before we call it a night, uh, I've gone through and I've taken a couple more things off the engine and uh, we're going to go back over there uh, with a pad and a paper and kind of go through some of the things that I know I need to order. I, I, you know, roughly you always, you always gauge about a week, maybe two weeks if you have to get something out of the country, uh, uh, you know, parts wise. So I know I need some seals and what have you. So uh, we'll give it another once over. I'll do another order here and then, uh, you know, hopefully once I get around to actually painting the block and whatnot. I'll start to get some parts in and we can actually put this thing back together.